So in this tutorial I'm going to go into great detail about our sketching tools available to us in our sketch ribbon tab. Okay, I'll be going through each of these commands and I'll be asking you to follow along and pause the video at particular points and then try out the commands for yourself and play around with them before we progress onto the next commands. Okay, so we're going to start off by looking at this command on the far left create 2D connected curves. Now this tool gives us a bit more freedom when we are creating our sketches and also much quicker. So left click on the command to activate it. Okay, we will have no options panel, no input manager pop up. We can start working straight away. Okay, so we are prompted to select our first point. We can left click and when we do, you'll see we have two icons pop up. One is highlighted in green and the other is not. These are our tangency conditions and the one highlighted in green is the one that is currently active. So the first icon means that we'll have no tangencies between our first drawn line and our next drawn line. We can switch the tangency condition by left clicking on our last point and it switches over. Left click again to go back. Okay, so this icon on the right means that we will have tangency between these two lines and you can see it draws with tangency. So let's stick with our polyline for now and we're just going to draw. Okay, we're just left clicking, selecting the next point allows us to draw the shape. Okay, we can middle click to confirm the operation. We can then middle click again to bring up the draw command. Left click, select our next point. And now I'm going to left click my last point to switch to tangency mode and continue drawing in this manner. See how all of our curves are tangent to one another at their meeting points. Creating a better flow. So we middle click. If you middle click again, start drawing. Now we can also use the Alt key within this drawing tool. So if we hold down the ALT key we'll be prompted to draw an arc. We can select the end point of the arc, release the ALT key and we can define the radius of the arc. Left click and we continue our drawing. So we hold down ALT key, left click, radius and continue. Okay, now what we can also do, if we hold down the ALT key, select our first point, but instead of releasing the ALT key, we still hold it and select our second point. And then when we release, we are drawing a three point curve. Okay, middle click, middle click again, and we can continue our drawing. So hold down the ALT key, pick one, two points, release the ALT key, and we're doing our three point curve. Middle click, middle click again to continue drawing. Okay, so that's about it for our draw tool. One more thing that it is capable of doing is creating a circle. When this is done, we bring up the command. If we hold down the ALT key when selecting our first point, left click, you see we are able to draw circles. Middle click to confirm. So this draw tool, this command, 
is a great thing to get into the habit of using because it can speed up your drawing and sketching process significantly. So moving along, next command is our line command. Left click to bring up the options panel for this command. Okay, and we have multiple options available here of how we want to define our line. The first one being a two point line. You select the first point, second point, and the line is drawn between them. Middle click to confirm. Middle click to bring up the operation again. We can use a parallel point line, which is where we select a reference line, and then we are able to draw a two point line that is parallel to that line. Parallel offset. We have a reference line and we offset it a distance. Okay, we do this in multiple instances. Middle click to confirm, middle click to bring up the last operation. Perpendicular line. Instead of being parallel to a reference line, we'll be making a line perpendicular to our reference line. Okay, at a 90 degree angle. This is also called normal. It is normal to this line. Perpendicular 90 degrees. We can specify an angle against our reference line. Okay. I'm just left clicking here to move on to the next field so that we can re-enter them again by clicking it inside of that field. We can draw horizontal lines, vertical lines. Okay, so there are many options available to us when using this one line command. Also within this drop down menu is our polyline, which is what we were using with our draw command. Okay. As well as this, we have a double polyline, which is like using the polyline, except we are drawing two lines parallel. This allows us to create nice channels. Middle click. Here we have our double polyline. We can then change the width between our two lines with relation to the left width, and then the right width corresponding to the left and right line. We can insert arcs at our corners. This is like inserting a fillet. Okay, so this can be a very useful drawing tool. Okay, so I'd like you to stop the video here and play around with our drawing command and our line commands get familiar with them and how they're brought in and just play around okay now let's move on to drawing our shapes we have a circle command left click to bring up our circle option panel okay so we can draw a circle by selecting a center a boundary middle click we can define a circle by selecting a center, then defining a radius or a diameter, the diameter being twice the radius. We can define a circle using three points one, two, three. Middle click, middle click again. Similarly, we can define our circle with two points. And then a radius. This is like the three point circle, except our third point is a radius. Confirm, middle click. Finally, we have a two point circle. Okay, so we've got 
these five different options of ways to create circles. Moving on, we have our arc commands. You can draw a simple arc with a three point by left clicking. I'm just left clicking here. Middle click to confirm, middle click to bring up the last operation. We can create an arc by defining two points and then a radius. This is in the same way that we defined an arc using the Alt key in our drawing tool. Middle click, create an arc with a center point and then two outside points. Middle click. Finally, we can create an arc with a center and an angle. Now, in all of these arc commands and in many other tools, you'll see this designer arc option. Okay. We can also create arc segments by left clicking our first point, middle clicking. Then we select our second point. Okay, this creates arcs that are tangent at their boundaries. Okay, so this is the same as our drawing tool. With the tangency condition met. Okay, so this is what we were using in the drawing tool. tangent arcs. Okay, moving on we can create rectangles. In the same way as our other commands we have many options available to us of how we would like to define our rectangle. Okay, moving on, we can draw a polygon. Okay, so we have multiple options in our polygon options panel of how we would like to define our polygon shape and size. So we left click for the center and then we define the radius. Now we can change our number of sides. And the angle with which we have our polygon situated. Confirm. Middle click. Okay, so there's many options available here. We can define our polygon based on the side length. Pick a corner. Pick a length of our sides. we can define the number of sides. So again, there's many options available to us here. Moving on, we have our ellipse shape command. And once again we have more options available to us when defining our ellipse. We do the center to the corner, middle click, corner to corner, middle click, and more. Okay, so as you can see we have many different tools available and many options within these tools when it comes to creating our sketches. Okay, so next along we have a point command. We are able to place points anywhere in our sketching environment by left clicking. Okay, we can also place them on lines or curves. We can also use our right click options to more specifically place our points on our lines or curves. 
So let's use the middle pick tool like we have used previously. Select the line and the point will be placed middle of that line. So there are many right click options, picking tools available to us when we're placing points. We can use an along snap. Okay, so select a curve and we can select how far along we would like our point to be placed in terms of percentage. Or distance. Okay, now also under our point command is our points on curve command where if we select a curve we can place a number of points spaced an equidistance apart. Okay, so we can divide up our curve alternatively we can define the distance between our points on our curve. Similarly, combining these last two options we could create a certain number of points on a curve a certain distance apart. Okay, so pause the video here and then come into the software and play yourself. Have practice placing circles, creating arcs, arc segments, rectangles, polygons, ellipses, and then practice placing points on these curves and lines. Okay, and we're going to have a look at the text tools. We have ready sketch, text and balloon. Let's start off with the ready sketch text. Left click, pick an origin, the center of our text. We can then type our text in. We can modify our font, our style, and the size of our text. Confirm the operation. And we have our text here. We can then double click to modify our text. Confirm. Now this text, if you hover your cursor over it, comes in as one complete entity. Now if we want to split our sketch into individual curve segments we can right click on it and explode it. And now you see our text is split into its individual curve segments. Okay. Now if you do this be aware that you cannot re-enter the text tool to make modifications to the text. Okay. So only use the explode when you really have to have access to the individual segment. Under here we can also place text. Pick a first point, specify our text. We can then make many changes to the style of our text. We can also add balloon text. Ok, 
Okay, so this has no real designing purpose. This is more for making notes about our designs. Moving on, we have our point curve, which is what we first touched on within our drawing tool by holding the Alt key and selecting two or more points. Okay, so this allows us to select many points and the curve is drawn between them. Middle click to stop drawing. Then we have a lot of options available to us. Okay, and if we come into our points by left clicking on them, we'll have access to some tangency tools. Okay, where we can define the tangency of each point and the magnitude of the tangency or the radius. Now, this becomes a very useful tool when trying to make nice, smooth and organic flowing shapes. Okay. So we can assign our tangencies to a particular direction by coming into our options panel, left clicking in tangent direction and selecting a direction. We also have right click options available to us when selecting a direction. Okay, we'll be getting used to these as we progress. We can also drag our points to make modifications. We'll double click to re enter our options panel. Now we're moving on to our control point. Okay, so this is the same as our point curve, but it's a slightly different way of defining it. We define it using control points. This way we're getting a smoother and more organic shape. We can make modifications to our curve in the same way dragging our points modifying tangencies ok moving on we have a three point curve Finally we have a point cloud but I'm not going to touch on this right now. Moving on we have our blend tool, okay, our blend command. Now this is useful, it is used to blend two curves together. For example let's select this endpoint, this endpoint and you'll see we have a curve drawn between them with a tangency at each end. We can make modifications to our weight at the start point, the end point, and confirm the operation. So we pick our first point and our second point. Confirm. Now, if instead of picking the end points, we pick somewhere along the curve it is going to draw 
a blend line from these two points along the curve. Okay. If we confirm the operation, it will then trim our original curves to the blend point, like so. Moving on, we have an offset command. Okay. With this, we are able to select a curve, and then offset it a particular distance. Find the distance we want to offset it. I'm going to change my step size by right clicking to 1. Okay, we can offset our curve like this. We're creating a copy of it, offset. Okay, now what you see here is what we call a self intersection. This curve is intersecting itself. Now in the CAD world, this is usually a very bad thing. Yeah, moving on, under the offset command, we have 2D medial command. Okay, this allows us to pick two lines, two curves, and the tool will draw a new curve between them. Here, okay, next up, we have an equation command, and we will not really be making use of this. If you'd like to play around with it yourself, go ahead. Ok so I noticed here I skipped over the slot command, let's check this out briefly, left click, we can create a slot, ok, by picking two points and defining a radius of these points, ok, creates a slot. Okay, under the slot command, we have a we have a notch command, okay, which allows us to notch our curves. We're not often going to be using this. But I'll show you it here anyway. We can put a notch into our curves. Okay, so I'd like you to pause the video here then try out for yourself our text commands, our slot commands, our curve commands, our blend tool to blend curves together, and finally our offset and 2D medial commands. We're going to take a look at our next commands, but in order to do that I'm going to draw a few shapes first okay so now we have our shapes let's take a look at our commands up here let's start off with the fillet okay the fillet is going to create a curve between two connected lines okay it is almost like a blend tool it creates a nice blend between the two lines we can change the radius of the fillet, and here we are. Okay, and now the fillet creates tangency at the boundary of each line. Middle click. Okay, so the fillet gets rid of these jagged edges and replaces it with a tangent arc. Okay, also under the fillet we have a fillet chain. Okay, with this we can fillet multiple corners so we can select the entire curve one by one 
Alternatively, you can do what is known as a chain pick by right clicking, quick chain pick, left click, select any line and the quick chain pick will automatically select all of the other curves or lines that are connected to the line that we picked. Okay. If we escape this, I'm going to show you again how to chain pick using a hotkey. Okay. When picking our curve, we can hold down the shift key on the keyboard, then left click, and it does a quick chain pick. Confirm for our fillet chain. Moving on, we have a chamfer. Okay. This is similar to the fillet, but instead of placing an arc, a curve at the corner, it will place a straight line. Okay, then we change the setback. We can also have a varied setback. Okay, and in the same way, our chamfer chain, like the fillet chain, will place a chamfer at the corners around a chain of curves. So let's use our quick chain pick, holding down shift, selecting a line, to modify our setback. And there you go, our chamfer chain. Okay, moving on, we have our trimming tools and we have many different kinds. So I'm going to start off by creating a point curve intersecting my other curves. Okay, now I can show you how our trimming works. Our first trim command is the power trim. Okay, we'll use our trims to erase parts of curves that we do not want anymore. Our power trim works by holding down the left mouse button and dragging around. Okay, you'll see a line being drawn. We move past our cursor over a curve, it will trim that curve up to its next intersection point. like so. Middle click. Next up we have a one touch trim. Okay, This is similar to the power trim except we're not dragging and creating a line. We are selecting our curves by left clicking on them. So in the same way, when we select the curve, it will trim it up to the next intersection point on that curve. Like so. Okay, so moving on. We can trim or extend the curve. Select the curve. Select our destination, it will extend the curve to that point whilst keeping tangency to the end point of the curve. Okay, likewise, we can trim slash so split a curve at certain intersection points. For example, we select two curves that intersect and then select the segment we want to trim. Alternatively, we can split it by selecting our trim option. We can break or we can delete.
and it will split our curve at the intersection point. Moving along, we have our trim slash split at point. Okay. Okay, so in a similar way, we pick a curve and then we can pick the point that we'd like to split it at or trim it to. Okay. If we confirm the operation here, our line will be split at that point. Alternatively, if we define a point, we can also define a segment that we want to keep. And then it will be trimmed to this point and keep this segment. Okay, moving on, we have a trim extend corner. Okay, so this trim will allow us to pick two curves, and if they are intersecting, it's going to trim them to the corner, the point at which they intersect. However, we can also pick two curves that aren't currently intersecting here and here. And when we do this, it will extend them to the point at which they would intersect. Okay, so this is quite a handy little trim tool. Okay, so moving on, we also have a delete bow ties and split intersections. We may use the delete bow ties at some point, but for now I'm not going to cover it. Split at intersections is kind of similar to our trim slash split curve command. Okay, it will simply split our curve at its intersection points. Confirm, and it will also keep the original, which we can blank out. And you see, it is split at its intersection points. Okay, so moving on from our trim tool, we come into our concatenate tool. Now, this is a very useful command. It allows us to combine curves. Now these curves that we want to combine must connect at a point. Okay, and if they're not tangent at their connecting point, the concatenate curve tool will force a continuity between them. Okay, so if our two curves are already tangent at their intersection point, Our concatenate tool will not have to force or continuity between them. However, if they are not tangent, like here, we can select a continuity method to force a tangency between them, and thus joining the two curves into one curve. can concatenate multiple curves at once. Okay, and changing our continuity method, we change the shape of our resultant curve. Okay, in the same way that we can concatenate, join curves together, we can split them apart by using our convert to arc slash lines command. This will split a curve into separate segments. Finally, I'm going to show you the modify command. This allows us to pick a curve and make modifications to it. This is the same result we get from double clicking on a curve or right clicking. First icon on the top left, 
more if I care. So now I'd like you to pause the video again and go into your own version of JCD Lite and in the sketch environment create a number of curves that intersect at many points Okay, create some shapes such as polygons and rectangles and practice using the fillets, the fillet chain, the chamfer and the chamfer chain Okay, and then draw some curves that intersect each other at many points and get used to using some of our trimming tools like so and then try our concatenate tool okay join some curves together into one larger curve and now we'll move on to our ready sketches we have a whole bunch of tools that are predefined and pre-constrained. Okay. Now you will see that these sketches, these shapes, have dimensions attached to them. And we can modify our dimensions in the same way as in the 3D environment by either double clicking on the dimension or right clicking on the dimension and navigating to modify value. We can then modify our shape. Okay, now the trace profile command, this is something that is actually very useful, but I'm not going to show you its purpose right now, but we will cover that in due course. The next thing I would like to make you aware of is our reference. Now the reference command allows us to reference geometry in the 3D environment and then make use of it within our sketching environment. So let's exit out into our 3D environment. Okay, so here we have our sketch in our 3D environment constrained to our front datum plane. I'm going to move to before we created our sketch in the history. And I'm going to insert a block in the 3D environment. And then I'm going to edit my sketch. Okay, so in our sketch environment we can see our block. Okay, but we cannot select it. It does not highlight when we hover our cursor over it. Okay, this is because this is in the 3D environment and not active in this sketching environment. Now using the reference command I can make references to geometry within the 3D environment Okay, so in the options panel we have various different ways of referencing our 3D environment and bringing it into our 2D environment. For example, we could reference a curve in our 2D environment. An edge will be classed as a curve in this case. We left click and it will be projected into our 2D environment. same way we can reference a face. Okay, and then when we hide our 3D environment by using our show target icon, our 3D environment is hidden but we still have our reference from this environment. Okay, now this is a dashed line. Dashed line means it is construction geometry, meaning that it will not show up in our 3D environment when we exit out into it. It is only in our 2D environment.
you see, we cannot see these lines when we're in our 3D environment. However, I can toggle the construction geometry on and off by right clicking on the curve, navigating to this icon, toggle type. If I left click here, it will become live geometry. And when I exit out into the 3D environment, we can see this curve. Okay, so we can access our construction geometry by right clicking on a curve and using our toggle. Alternatively, we can find the icon from this drop down arrow, toggle type. Okay, so moving on, we have the option to bring in an image into our 2D environment. If we left click on this command, we will be directed into our JCD light folder. Okay, in this case, I'm going to bring in this butterfly image. Open. And we can then place our image within our sketching environment. And then define its size. We can also make modifications to the size of our image in our options panel. Okay, and we can use this to trace out a shape. Okay, so I'll use my point curve and I can begin tracing along the edges of this butterfly. Okay, so this black hides our curve somewhat, but our image can be treated just like any other entity. If we right click, we are able to blank it. There we can see our outline of the butterfly. Okay, moving on, we have our basic editing commands, just like in the 3D environment. Okay, and they work in much the same way only we are de dealing with curves in a two-dimensional environment. So let me try my mirror command. I'm going to mirror this curve across this line. Okay, so I won't go into great detail on these. They work in the same way as within our 3D environment. Okay, so we have covered almost all of our commands in the sketch ribbon tab in our sketching environment. So this video is going to end now, but after it does, I would like you to try out our ready sketches, bring in some ready sketches, and then play with the dimensions. I'd then like you to practice moving between our sketching environment and our 3D environment. Then try referencing some objects in the 3D environment. Okay, by using our reference. Practice hiding the 3D geometry by using our show target command. We can realign our view by selecting plane view. Okay. Then try bringing in some images, tracing the images. And have a look at our toggle command that allows us to turn curves into construction geometry. which means that they will be hidden within the 3D environment. Okay, so good luck and just play around and keep practicing.